Hey folks, welcome to VerifiedInvesting.com. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here. In today's video, we're going to deep dive into copper, platinum, and palladium. Looking from a purely technical analysis standpoint, what are the charts telling us? Let's dive right in. All right, so first we're going to start with copper. Now, copper, obviously, this was a lot of tariff kind of craziness over here. But the one thing that catches my eye is this big drop, right? So with the tariff threat pop, we saw copper move from basically $5 as high as about $6. But then when it kind of dissipated, copper fell all the way down to $4.37 before going into a kind of a sleeper type situation. Now, in technical analysis, the thing that you have to pay attention to is the pattern formation. The pattern formation is a big drop with sideways consolidation. This is known as a bear flag in technical analysis and generally resolves itself to the downside. When I say generally, by the way, it means probability favors that directional move. All right. So basically, we're looking at a bear flag formation on copper and we can expect for it to eventually move to the downside. Now, what's interesting here is that, you know, we're looking at copper showing some major weak signals. We've seen oil do the same sort of thing lately, being in the lower range around $60 a barrel. And those are all signals that the U.S. economy is likely weakening as well as the global economy. So on a bigger macro scale, I do think it's important for us to take note that what copper is doing is telling us that the U.S. economy and the global economy may be on the verge of weakening. Now, if we're looking at downside targets, where are we looking, right? I mean, where can we expect copper to find support? And notice how all of these lows basically follow a trend line. So if we take the low from July of 2022 and we stretch it through these recent lows, what do we get? We get this beautiful upsloping or ascending trend line that has been holding price above it since 2022. And look at how many times it's come down tagging or kissing that trend line. And what that trend line can be told or tells us is that essentially that would be your next major support. So if the bear flag plays out, which is favored to do so based on probability, the downside target is going to be to about this 420 421 target. Now, whether or not it breaks there, we'll have to wait and see. But in the very least, if price follows the way technical analysis generally works, we would see a drop or the bear flag playing out with a small bounce afterwards. And then generally with this many hits on a trend line, eventually we would expect copper to break this support. Now you might say, well, why do we assume copper will break this level when it hasn't broken so many times before? And the, I'm going to give you the answer here, folks. And this is, again, getting to some pretty complex technical analysis, uh, things that I utilize, my methodology. But essentially what you'd find is that when you have a trend line, whether it's a descending or ascending trend line and price hammers it, the first three hits, it's not going to break. Very rarely does it break it. On the fourth hit, you get to a 50-50 chance. So fourth hit is 50-50 odds. If it hits it, let's say it bounces on the fourth and doesn't break, then the fifth hit is 60-40, the sixth hit is 70-30, the seventh hit is 80-20, meaning that every subsequent time after the fourth hit, it starts to favor a breakdown more and more. And what I mean by that is that if we look at this and we can start labeling and we say, okay, this was your beginning point, here's your number two, Here's your number three, number four, number five, and number six. And I'm not counting this here because it didn't come super close, nor this one as well. So we're not going to count those. But it's suffice it to say that we've now hit six times where if we break here, we'll probably hit a seventh, get a small bounce, and then you have to assume it's going to break to the downside. All right. And again, that's because the odds are getting so close to 80, 90 percent chance at this point of hitting this trend line. All right. So the bias in the near term is very clearly bearish on copper with a small bounce off 420 to 421. Uh, after the small bounce, you would expect a break of the trend line and copper going lower. How low will it go? It'll have stopping points along the way, but you'd be looking at between three and four dollars on copper on this chart. All right. Turning our attention to platinum. Now, platinum had this amazing rally to the upside. It then reversed, and this, again, is very similar to what we're seeing on copper. Now, the only difference here is that this is towards the upper end of the chart, which means that you would buy on pullbacks. Now, listen, when I say pullbacks, we mean that 
the down move is forming a bear flag and the likely scenario is platinum is going to see some selling pressure. Now, how low will it go is the big question. And I do have a zone here on uh, platinum, right? So you take this high here to these lows and basically your accumulation zone is between $1,175 and $1,100. So essentially the way I'm looking at it is you have a, a reversal bear flag that yields a drop. If it gets down to this zone, this is the accumulation zone. And by the way, longer term, I continue to like platinum, palladium, silver, copper, all of them. But at least per the chart in the near term on copper and platinum, there is a bearish bias near term. Copper has a mid to longer term bearish bias as well. But platinum would become a buying opportunity between $1,175 and $1,100 on that commodity or that precious metal. Now, again, you can see here, if we zoom in, essentially what I'm projecting or forecasting is that, again, we have the bear flag here. So here's your drop, bear flag consolidation. At some point we break, we come down in this range, and then we get the bigger bounce here. And that, again, will be the buying opportunity. Eventually, I do think it takes out the highs just because of its precious metal stature being even rarer than gold. Granted, its use case isn't quite as abundant, uh, being more for automotive use and such. But again, you look at this and you say, all right, eventually platinum, again, being so rare, uh, especially as dollars are being printed, the Fed's about to lower rates. On pullbacks, we do want to buy this. Now, looking at palladium, palladium's had a little bit of a different track. It had a much bigger pullback. Look at the beautiful bear, uh, bearish signal here. This was called a topping tail in technical analysis. That told you downside was coming. I have a buyable level anywhere between, and I'm going to do my zone again because I think the zone is very helpful. So here is your 1040 level down to these lows here, right to here. It's a much tighter range, 1040 to 1028 or 1,028 to 1,040, that is your level on pl palladium to be a buy. You can see big drop, little bounce. I'm expecting one more move down, and then I will start accumulating on palladium, again, between 1040 and 1028 to the downside. But again, this was a great breakout on palladium. Now we just need to see that flush out of the weak hands, and I think, again, it starts turning back to the upside. So very cool on that front, folks. So again, as always, I try to bring you no BS, just what are the charts telling us? The charts, again, platinum, bearish near term with a longer term bullish bias, copper near term with a midterm bearish bias. Long term is tricky. Again, if you're going multiple years out, we'd have to see how the economy does. But midterm and near term on copper are bearish. Palladium short term is getting close to target, but likely some downside and then bullish midterm for a turn back up on that precious metal as well. Thank you as always for tuning in, guys. Appreciate your support. And again, it's all about the charts, price, pattern, and time. All right, price, pattern, and time. Those are the metrics that if you find out what the chart is telling you with those three, you can get yourself to that 75, 80% win rate that again, so few people out there are able to get to. It's a beautiful thing. You guys have a good one. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care.